Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is the second lesson on the Cold War. In this lesson, we're specifically going to focus on our foreknowledge of the Cold War to better understand the rest of the curriculum. When we look at the world map and working from west to east, we start at the United States of America which is one of the two most prominent figures in the Cold War. Just southeast, you'll find Cuba. Over the Atlantic, we find Britain, France, Italy, and Germany. Moving to the northeast, you'll find the other superpower during the Cold War, Russia. Straight over to the far east, you'll find Japan. Now, these countries are important during the Cold War and the Second World War. Though there are many other countries that are also very important, these are the ones that I wish to highlight in this curriculum. Now, let's look at the leaders and the flags of these countries during the Second World War. Let's start with the Allies. Franklin D. Roosevelt of America served in the Second World War as the President of the United States up until 1945. After he died, he was replaced with Harry S. Truman. Charles de Gaulle served as President of France. Winston Churchill served as Prime Minister of the UK. And the leader of the Soviet Union during the Second World War was Joseph Stalin. Let's look at the leaders of the Axis powers during the Second World War. The leader of Nazi Germany was Adolf Hitler. Of Italy, Benito Mussolini and the Emperor of Japan, Hirohito. Now you might be wondering, why is it important to know what they look like? The flags, the presidents, or even where the country is? In history, we evaluate sources a lot. And in these sources, they would sometimes only use the leader's name or something associated with the country. And it is important to know which country you're talking about in the first place. So for instance, the source could say, Stalin didn't agree with this policy. Then the source is actually talking about Russia not agreeing with this policy. Sometimes you have certain images or symbols associated with certain countries. For instance, when it comes to Russia, a bear is many times used to symbolize Russia. And Uncle Sam is used to represent the United States. And it's important to get acquainted with all these symbols. So in the first video, we talked about the tension between communism and capitalism. So let's look at these ideologies individually. When we look at capitalism, the focus is on the freedom of the individual. There's a free market system. In other words, you can start your own business if you want to. The market is determined by supply and demand. There's a freedom of speech, freedom of the media, and the leader of such a country is elected through a democratic election. Let's move over to communism. In communism, the aspiration is towards a classless system. In a communist country, the state owns everything and there's no free market system. The goal is to centralize the money and to spread it out evenly to all the people of that country. There's no freedom of the press and it is led by a dictator. There's no free and fair elections in these countries. So it's clearly seen that these two ideologies stand in opposition against each other. If I would take one central characteristic in capitalism, it would be freedom. And if it would take one central characteristic in communism, it would be control. So the term that we're going to discuss today is the term Cold War. A Cold War is a state of conflict between nations that does not involve direct military action, but is pursued primarily through economic and political actions. From 1945 till 1991, there was a lot of tension between Russia and America, but it never erupted in full-scale military conflict between those two countries directly, and it remained in this state of tension. So that wraps up our second lesson on the Cold War. Please follow the link in the description to the next video and um, complete the activity in the description. Thank <laughs> you.